Okay, so good afternoon, my dear students. So before we start with our class discussion for today, let's have first our prayer. Okay, so I want you to bow your heads and feel the presence of the Lord as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we offer you everything we do today, all our works, our joys, and our sorrows. Everything will be an act of love for you, Holy Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Joachim, and Saint Anne, and Guardian Angel, intercede for me so that I may be deserved to be helped and saved today and always. Virgen del Pilar, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So, for this morning, we will be discussing the lesson about the Impressionistic composer. So, while uh, we are into this, okay, let's see first the uh, sound or song coming from the Impressionistic composer. And while listening to that, I want you to look into this picture and try to imagine or try to feel what is the message of the video or the music to you as well as this painting. Huh? Okay, so here is the video that I want you to listen. into your mind okay, what the um, things rushing into your mind while listening to that now so I ask you to look into this painting while listening to the music so the title of that song my dear student is Claire de Lune C L A I R D E L U N E okay Claire de Lune and what is the meaning behind that particular song or that Claire de Lune song, okay? So, it is, this Claire de Lune music is pertaining to a moonlight. That's why I ask you to look into this painting because um, the composer of this song created or was inspired to create this music based from that painting okay so that is pertaining to a moonlight so when we talk about Claire de Lune it is a beautiful piece of music that expresses the emotions of a sentimental walk so the title Claire de Lune it means moonlight in French and the piece indeed remind us of a moonlight during or the, the moonlit during night, no? However, this piece original title, the original title of this piece is Promenade Sentimental, meaning to say um, sentimental walk, okay? And Claire de Lune, the, the 
composer of that music is none other than the composer that we will be discussing for this morning. That's the reason why I ask you to listen to his one um, composition, one of his composition. No? And aside from that, if you will be thinking the sound of it, the texture of it, no? it's very elegant. No? The, a very elegant in manner of performance of um, in adapting to any emotion. So Claire de Lune is very elegant in its manner of adapting to any emotion. And also its tone, it can be interpreted with joy, melancholy, fear, anguish, excitement, curiosity. No? So that is how you can interpret based from one person to another. For the others, they, they might think that, oh, it's very soothing, it's very calming, while for others, it's very fearful music. It's, you know, it's all about curiosity music. Now, that's how this composer, Debussy, created this composition, okay? So now, we will be proceeding with our review. Okay, no? So, if you still remember, from C to C, we are calling that octave. No? From D to D, octave. E to E, octave. Okay, so, when we say octave, they are the notes that was composed of eight. No? Eight notes. No? Ascending and descending. No? Next, the fifths. If we will be looking at the fifths, you just have to count. Okay, from C, okay, one, two, three, four. Four, five. Then the fifth of C is none other than G. Okay. Then if you will be looking into E, then one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Then the fifth of E is none other than B. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Please be mindful. Okay. Now we will now proceed to the impressionistic composers okay so when we are talking about impressionistic there is this quote according to this uh, composer no? some people they wish above all to conform the rules i wish only to render what i can hear there is no theory you only have you have only to listen Pleasure is the law. So there are times, students, especially if you are going to have the major of music, that there are lots of rules. Not only in music, but also even in grammar, even in English, in other subjects. There are lots of rules that you have to follow, right? But for this particular people, especially in this musician, this composer, no? There is no rules, okay? Because some people, they are always following. For them to keep safe, you know, they are playing safe, they are following the rules. But for him, what he heard, he wants to release it. He wants to express or to show to the people that this is me. This is what I am. This is what I heard. This is what I want you to listen and this is how I want you to listen it. No? So there is no theory. The thing that you just have to do is to listen on it. Okay, then pleasure is the law. So it is like that. Pleasure is the law, meaning to say that the main thing that you have to follow is that for you to enjoy, for you to be satisfied. No? That's the thing that he wanted you to experience here. Okay, so here we have this first composer named Claude Debussy. Okay, so for the American pronunciation, it's Debussy. But for um, British, I'm not so sure, but Debussy, like that. Okay, so Claude Debussy is a composer, a French composer of the early 20th century. And he was born on August 22, 1862 in St. Germanian Lay near Paris. Okay, 
aside from that, no, um, he entered Paris Conservatoire. Okay? Or this is the Conservatory of Music. Wherein at 11, no, that is the time that he entered this Conservatory of Music in Paris. And within a few years of studying, no, his professors were shocked, really shocked by his unique use of harmonies to point that it defied the sacred rules of the music theories. Because students, in music, there are so many rules that you have to follow that they are calling a sacred music theories because that's the one that they are following since before. Right? If you have an ancestor and they are believing about these things that for example, you shouldn't cut your nails during night, you shouldn't sweep the floor during night, you shouldn't uh, tie your hair or sleep with wet hair. So our ancestors, our parents, grandparents, they are telling us to do that because nothing will happen if we just follow. No? Okay? But then again, for Claude Debussy, it's a different thing. No. So he is not literally or specifically against, but he just wants to satisfy his ears and the listener's ears by doing that because that's the thing that made him thinking that it's beautiful. No. This way, there is a song, This is me, this is real. No. <laughs> because he just wanted to show what he can do and how he can do it now even it is already um opposing or against the sacred rules that we have from the past no okay so Debussy introduced new chords chromaticism dissonances and interesting rhythms no so we have discussed already the new chords you know, what are the different chords we also discuss when we say chromaticism in a scale we have their chromatic you know? when we just talk about chromaticism it's just this one okay so these are composed of 12 notes black keys and white keys from c c sharp d d sharp e f f sharp G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. Okay, so those are the uh, things in the chromaticism. Dissonances, we have there the uh, diminished, augmented, minor, no? Okay, and then interesting rhythms and scales. No? So the different scales, we also discussed that, no? Also, one of his famous composition was the sweet bergamask or the clear the lune which means moonlight okay that's the one that um we listened a while ago the clear the lune and it is a very popular composition because you can also see or listen or observe that in a different movies like in the twilight now, there's a part in twilight that claude debussy's music claire the lune was presented there no Okay, so aside from that, okay, let's present here. Uh, so aside from, um, what do you call that? Aside from Claire de Lune, okay, and also the contributions of Claude Debussy, no? So aside from the new chord combinations, full tone chord, bitonal chord, no? Aside from that, um, he was... He was even asked by his professors for explanation of his ideas. Since it is opposing already the sacred rule of the music theories, that's why they are asking, they are seeking for explanation how he came up with those ideas in creating the composition. Nevertheless, he was still commended by them as a music genius of this period no and one of uh, aside from that uh, famous composition one of great masterpieces that 
Claude Debussy created is this opera, the Pelias et Melisande. Okay, so his musical style is the use of full tone scales. He also used fifth and octaves. Okay, so that's the one that about um, Claude Debussy. No. So other famous works of Claude Debussy, we have their Jules, Le Amère, The Enfant Prodigue or The Prodigal Son, Prelude to the Afternoon of a Fawn. Okay, so now let's listen to one of his composition, which is The Prodigal Son. Okay, let's listen to The Prodigal Son of Claude Debussy. Okay, here it is. Man. Listen carefully. Okay, so that is the um, Lien Fan Prodig or the Prodigal Son of Claude Debussy. Okay, so I hope that you understand, okay, the life of Claude Debussy. Okay, so he is uh, famous because not really an, in a negative way, but he expressed his feelings through his composition by making his own, uh, trying to be unique. Uh, he created his own kinds of notes, no? Okay, so now let's proceed with this another composer, which is none other than Maurice Ravel. Okay, so for him, music, I feel, must be emotional first and intellectual the second. The only love affair I have ever had was with music. So based from this one, if you are listening students um, about music, okay, so you might be thinking about the sound of it, you will be starting to feel okay, the emotions and relate yourself into the sound of that particular song, right? That's the first thing that we are doing when we are listening. So the main thing that we kept on listening to this music is because of the sound no, that makes us comfortable or maybe somehow it consoles us, no, people, or it relates the sound of it. It feels like it's a hugging person. It's a person hugging you. Okay, that's why you are being emotional. When you are alone, you really like to listen to music. No? And then for him... If you are thinking like that, then you are the same with Maurice Ravel. So, in music, you must feel it. You must be emotional first. 
And then after that, since you you feel emotional already, then you will start to be thinking, okay? How how it is presented? What is that all about? What's the lyrics? You will start analyzing the lyrics of the song. Then that's being intellectual in the second time around, no? So, according to Morris, it's the only love affair that he has, okay? So, that's the quotation according to Morris Ravel, okay? So, while Debussy is acknowledged as the outstanding impressionist composer, here, Joseph Morris Ravel from 1875 to 1937, he is known for his style and composition. He is known for his style and composition. Then, he is also a French post-impressionist composer. So, in the post-impressionist, this is near in the end, ending of the impressionism. No? So, aside from being a composer, he is also a conductor and a pianist. No? So, he is a well-known um, composer because of his style and compositions. So, Ravel was born on March 7, 1875 in a village near to saint jean de Luz, France. Okay? And then, he came from, he really, yeah, he really came from a family of artists. And there, he received every inspiration from his Swiss father when his talent for music became obvious at an early age, okay? And then in the year 1889, he entered the Paris Conservatory of Music and he stayed there until 1905, okay? Aside from that, okay, his works describe the following styles in music composition. So, these are the styles styles that made him popular no the rhythms are more incisive okay then the melodies are broader in span and it added notes and unresolved appoggiaturas when we say appoggiatura my dear students it is a written as a grace note or a prefix to a principal note and is printed in a small character so if you have seen already um, a music sheet or a music score, then you will be seeing a tiny, a little note, no? Which is followed by a big note, okay? So, that little or that cute little note is called a quadratura, okay? So, it is just written in a small character and it's a type of musical ornament that creates a suspension and subtract to itself half the time value of the principal note that follows. For example, like that. Because if you will be thinking of the sound of a real note, like that. But if we will be transferring it into, um, what do you call that? If we will be transferring it into a grace note, then the sound will be like this. Okay? If it's big note, okay? You see the difference between the grace note and a real note. But I'm not saying that grace note is not a real note, no? Okay? Then aside from that, the harmonies are more dissonant, no? This is the use of the diminished chord, um, chromaticism, the use of minor, augmented, like that. No. And then aside from that, orchestration are influenced from the 19th century composers. Okay? So that's the um, styles of uh, the composition of this composer. No? Some of his famous work that we have here is Daphne at Chloe, then Rasp Rhapsody Espanol, and then Bolero. Okay, so if we will be thinking about that, the last two orchestral compositions that were best known and 
exposed his mastery of the art of instrumentation that is presented in the Bolero and Rhapsody Espanol. Okay, so now we will be taking glimpse of his Bolero and his well-known theme that shows his art of instrumentations. So we are going to listen to Bolero. Okay, that is one of the famous composition of Rabel. Here it is. I want you to listen to that. Okay, so Bolero is a one movement orchestral piece where the theme is played persistently by various instruments that you can hear there now. So only the timbre or the timbre changes and not the melody of the theme. And then the piece had an opening rhythm on the snare drums that you can hear with the rhythm that continues persistently. That is in ostinato when we say ostinato that is um, presented all throughout the work. Huh? So it proceeds as played either in solo, um, duet, or quartet. Okay? okay so that is the composition of Morris Raven. Again. Okay, so now since it's done already, um, do you have any question? Okay, if you don't have question po, okay, so please answer. Let's recall activity wherein you will be describing impressionism and its characteristics that is in your book, okay, as created by Claude Debussy and Maurice Ravel. So you will be listening to their music that we have here, okay? And then based from that, uh, you will describe the characteristics that they um, presented on the different music composition, okay? And then I want you to, okay, the given links are still here, no? I want you to watch and listen to Maurice Ravel's orchestral composition of Bolero and as you watch it, identify the different musical instruments that played okay, in the composition or in the presentation. Okay, so just write even 10 of it. Uh -huh. Okay, so do you still have any question po? None. Okay. So if you don't have any question, then that would be all for this morning. And thank you so much. Okay. Have a nice day and bye-bye.